All right, let's now get started then with the contents I prepared for this week. I thought I would start with a short teaser, what you will be able to do after this course. Of course, it's a long journey, 15, uh, 15 weeks in the future, but at some point you will be able to accomplish something really cool with deep learning, things you will learn in this class. So here are a few examples of class projects that students worked on in the previous semesters. For example, in this project, students converted audio um, signals into spectrograms, for example, spoken text, and then they applied yeah, convolutional neural networks to classify different texts and uh, yeah, to extract language out of the audio clips. Um, so in this case, it was actually not language, I just see it was finger snapping and here singing, so uh, distinguishing between different audio inputs. So it was one example of a class project from yeah, last semester. Another one was yeah, working with 3D convolutional networks. So this is a 3D version of the so-called MNIST dataset, which you will be seeing a lot in this class, or at least in the introductory lectures later on, because it's a yeah, simple data set to get started with neural networks. And, and yeah, in this project, the students uh, yeah, worked with FRMI, or uh, yeah, magnetic, magnetic resonance imaging data, so like brain scans and so forth, and yeah, classifying yeah, different types of yeah, brain scans. So that was another interesting project. Or also, uh, yeah, students worked with different types of generative adversarial networks, which will also be covered at the end of yeah, this um, class, where you will be able to generate new data or also mix data from different data sources. So here, the students uh, yeah, mixed artistic paintings or photographs, artistic inputs with a uh, um, yeah, portrait of a photo model and then the output was basically here shown on the right hand side like a, a portrait of a person mixed with the different styles. So this would be an example of yeah, style transfer. Um, yeah, Why did I pick these uh, three projects? <laughs> that was kind of arbitrarily. Um, it was just something, yeah, so I looked at the projects from last semester to be honest and looked at which ones had yeah, nice uh, figures. So in that way uh, it looked nicer on slides. But of course you are free to work on whatever you like for your class project and I will talk more about that later. I don't want to overwhelm you with too many things uh, at the beginning. Just wanted to show you some examples of things you will be able to accomplish at the end of the semester. Um, yeah, also if you're interested uh, a little bit about my research, so I'm working a lot on uh, machine learning and deep learning. So also, yeah, just compiled an overview here of uh, projects I worked on. So yeah, just to also introduce myself and what I'm interested in. So yeah, last year, for example, I worked on uh, rank consistent auto regression networks. We call that method Coral, which is for Oh uh, yeah, you can think of it as classification of ordinal inputs. So if you have class labels that are ordered and we want to sort them or predict the right order of the labels and yeah, also the numeric uh, value associated with it, that for that we developed networks here applied to age classification. Or we worked on yeah, face privacy. We called this method um, privacy net, where we can hide uh, facial attributes, for example, age and gender and race and so forth. Uh, from the input images for yeah, protecting one's privacy. Also, um, yeah, collaborated with people from NVIDIA. It was more like a review article. We uh, yeah, wrote about the latest trends in the realm of Python, machine learning and deep learning. Uh, in particular, the focus on GPU memory. And that's also something we will be talking more about later when we talk about the tools that we will be using for this class. Uh, yeah, with a student of mine, uh, I also wrote another review article here on machine learning and AI-based approaches for bioactive ligand discovery. So, uh, yeah, one of my students is working on uh, yeah, small ligand discovery and synthesis, also using generative uh, models, and generative deep learning models for yeah, in the context of yeah, molecule, uh, molecular synthesis and design. And uh, yeah, another student of mine is working on few shot learning so few shot learning is yeah, a branch of deep learning that is concerned with uh, learning from small data sets most of the time people use yeah meta learning or transfer learning we will be talking more about transfer learning uh, later in this course we won't be covering few shot learning though i may ask though my uh, student maybe to give a small guest lecture 
if he has time later this semester. And Zhongji here who was uh, working also on this paper, he is also our TA in this semester. So if you are interested, you can uh, ask Zhongji more about different few shot learning approaches and he would be very excited to ch chat more about you, uh, more with you about that, I think. So during office hours, if you have questions about few shot learning, I think he would be excited to talk more about it because he's always excited to talk about it. Yeah, and lastly, I'm also um, yeah working on some traditional machine learning methods. Um, so this was in a collaboration uh, where we used uh, not deep learning, but yeah, traditional machine learning methods. In this case, uh, nearest neighbor methods for yeah also predictions related to computational biology. So here, this was concerned with um, the structure of a GPCR, which is a G protein coupled receptor that is yeah a very uh, important protein. Or protein receptor it's a uh, binding to small molecules in humans and yeah most most drug targets are actually targeting gpcrs but here this was more like um yeah a fundamental computational biology research analyzing the structural um, yeah composition of these proteins so this is just a, a little bit about me so you can probably see a, a theme is that i like uh, working on deep learning and also have some interest in computationally uh, computational biology applications so these two are basically my uh, main research areas and things i'm really excited about okay but now let's talk more about the course so uh, yeah for this course uh, i planned lots of topics uh, so mainly deep learning and generative adversarial ne ne networks like uh, yeah, like the course title suggests. And I structured this course into five parts. So here are parts um, one, two, three. And on the next slide, I have some more parts, the remaining two. So first in the introduction, that's where we are right now. I wanted to give you a brief overview of this course and yeah, also introduce machine learning and deep learning. That's what we are going to do this week. Then I uh, want to also brief, uh, briefly talk about the history of deep learning. And I think that's interesting because that helps you understanding like where the things and motivations are coming from. Because yeah, deep learning, uh, the term deep learning is relatively new. It yeah, emerged about 10 years ago, but um, it has a long history because yeah, deep learning, you can think of it as a fancy term for neural networks. And neural networks have been around for at least 60, 70 years. And there are yeah, some ideas that emerged very early on that motivated uh, the development of different later uh, ideas later on. And we will be covering a lot of things related to neural networks. So in this, um, this lecture, you can think of it as the, the big picture overview. So we will then just briefly cover the history and then later when we are introducing different topics in this lecture we will do this uh, yeah, step by step and relate that back to the history and also motivate why we we learn about them and why they are useful yeah and then we will talk about one of the early methods of yeah machine learning a single layer neural network so the perceptron algorithm it's a very traditional algorithm it's not very yeah, commonly used nowadays anymore but i think this is like an easygoing introduction to the problem of classification so um, classifying oops classifying things putting things into different categories and yeah i think that will be a good introduction to get started with the topic and then uh, we will have a small uh, part two here which is concerned with the mathematical and computational foundations so with that i mean like introducing some mathematical um, yeah, necessities like linear algebra so in deep learning linear algebra is usually used to yeah, express things more compactly technically we can or we could uh, use deep learning without linear algebra but it would be very yeah hard to write it down and also uh, slow to implement because uh, when we yeah, use deep learning in practice, the computing libraries that we use, they use or they rely on um, yeah, linear algebra uh, computational routines uh, that help us yeah, executing certain computations more efficiently compared to, let's say, a Python for loop. So linear algebra is like uh, in that way very important for deep learning. Uh, we won't be covering or needing any advanced uh, linear algebra concepts, just simple 
yeah, vector dot products and matrix multiplications. That's it basically. Uh, but I th think it's still worthwhile yeah, covering this in a separate lecture because yeah, uh, laying down the groundwork for the later lectures properly makes everything later on a little bit easier, I think. Um, then we will be talking about gradient descent. That's yeah, a calculus topic. That's uh, Gradient descent is the main method for yeah, parameterizing or training neural networks. And then uh, after, this is more like a refresher after covering this topic, we will talk about automatic differentiation with PyTorch. So automatic differentiation is yeah, calculus on the computer, you can think of it like that. And we will be using a tool called PyTorch, which is a library for yeah, linear algebra, um, automatic differentiation, and then also uh, neural network training or deep learning. And it also allows us to implement things on the GPU to make things more efficient. So I will also explain then here in uh, lecture seven, how you can use uh, cluster and cloud computing resources. It will be a relatively short uh, part though, because yeah, the main, the main uh, topic is deep learning. Uh, of course, computational aspects are necessary, but for this introductory class, um, you don't have to necessarily be an expert programmer in, or yeah, user of computers. You should be familiar with certain things on your computer and certain programming aspects, but yeah, um, we are not here in machine learning engineering, more like uh, giving a conceptual overview. So you will get by with um, some free resources that I will talk about in, in this lecture. But if you're interested, you can of course also use more advanced uh, resources, for example, our uh, campuses, HTCC, and so forth. But it won't be required for this class. Um, yeah, and then after the mathematical and computational foundations, we will be talking then finally about uh, neural networks. So in this uh, part three, I will lay the groundwork for yeah, deep learning. So we will talk or we start with logistic regression, which you can think of a single layer neural network. So this is basically an extension of this um, yeah, uh, single layer neural network that we talked about earlier that is now uh, differentiable and using the logistic regression as a starter we will add additional hidden layers making this a deep network which is also called a uh, multi-layer perceptron and then we will learn how we can train such a uh, multi-layer perceptron using the back propagation algorithm um, then parts here parts 10 to 12 are more like tricks for training deep neural networks for example regularization techniques to avoid overfitting um, yeah, input normalization and weight initialization. It's just yeah, making training neural networks more robust and faster. And then also talking about um, learning rates and uh, yeah, some advanced optimization algorithms. So like fancier versions of gradient descent essentially. And these are really kind of necessary to make neural networks work well in practice. These topics may not sound super exciting, especially like 10 and 11, but they are super useful or important even yeah, to make neural networks work well. And then uh, we will get to the interesting parts in this course, or I would say the more advanced parts. So here in part four, we will then be talking about deep learning for computer vision and language modeling. So we will spend uh, yeah, a lot of time on convolutional networks. So this is one big topic. And then we will also talk about recurrent neural networks. They are for language modeling. So convolutional networks are more for image modeling, although you can also use a one dimensional convolutional network for text. Um, but yeah, text will be more uh, focused on in lecture 15. And these will kind of also lay the groundwork for the deep generative models that we will be talking about. So uh, in terms of deep generative models, we will be talking about autoencoders, so-called variational autoencoders. Um, then we will talk about generative adversarial networks. You may already have heard of them as GANs. So it's just a long form of writing GAN, generative adversarial network. Um, then this is also a very big topic. We will have a, a two lectures on that. So one introduction and then one on some more advanced uh, GANs for example, the Wasserstein GAN, and then also how we can evaluate and compare different GANs to each other. Because now um, in this part, we are focused on prediction. Oops. 
prediction. And, um, and in the second part here, we are focused on generating things. So it's a little bit different. It's a little bit trickier to evaluate these models. So we will have a lecture on that. And then uh, I also plan to cover some aspects about recurrent new networks for generative modeling, for example, generating new text um, using, uh, yeah, or in a sequence to sequence context. So here in lecture 15, I will first try also to focus only on the prediction parts, but we will be revisiting this topic also for yeah, generating new data on text, and then also going into a more advanced topic, adding the so-called attention mechanism to RNNs, and then also explaining self-attention in the context of transformers, which are yeah underlying the models um, that you have heard about in the media probably. One is called BERT or GPT-2 and GPT-3. So these are the building blocks of these models. So we'll also talk about those. So I don't want to make this too crowded here, but this part will be essentially for images and these two last parts here will be for text. So we will have both uh, generative models for uh, images and for text.